Hello and welcome to the Bikes or Death podcast. My name is Patrick and I'm your digital tour guide taking you on conversational journeys with radical people who recreate on bikes and love the outdoors. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's guest is Rebecca Vader, who is not a big name. Um, in fact, many of you may have not heard of her. Um, she came on my radar when one of my uh, listeners uh, sent me a link to her Instagram, started following her and her journeys. I knew nothing about her. I, li I, I watched, I followed her for like a day or two, knowing nothing about her, nothing about her story. Um, I really enjoyed her unique perspectives, not only on cycling, um, but just life. Uh, she is, I found her to be very entertaining um, and just full of all kinds of, yeah, different perspectives on just about everything we talked about. You know, like anytime I asked her a question and kind of thought I might know what the answer was, she always surprised me uh, with her answer. It was always something that I didn't expect. And I, I, I really enjoyed that. You know, it's always good to have different perspectives and different ways of looking at things. Um, you know, I'm starting to think that all bike packers are just awesome. Uh, it's so crazy how, you know, I see somebody on Instagram, shoot them a message, set up a time to talk. I don't know anything about them. We've never talked before. Um, but then you just get into these like really intense and fun and cool conversations with, um, you know, some of the most interesting people that I've ever met. It's funny because like I'm getting kind of used to talking to these amazing people um, and, and it's becoming like normal. But what we're talking about is not normal at all. I mean, these people are awesome. All of them, all the ones that I talk to have been just incredible and amazing human beings. And uh, Rebecca is no exception. She had a couple uh, really uh, great quotes that I'll share with you real quick. Um, one of them is, wait. You're telling me that there is a bike that can take me anywhere I want to go? She also said, I just went to fucking life school. I love that quote, life school. Um, anyway, so you got to listen if you want to hear those in context. Um, another thing that she talked about was her days of contrast. Um, she doesn't really have bad days. She just calls them days of con contrast and days where, um, like days of growth. Um, so anyway, like I said, a lot of really cool perspectives um, and neat ideas just on life and riding bikes. Uh, I found her to be truly entertaining and inspiring, and I hope that you do too. So on Bikes or Death, we do things a little bit different. I understand that on other podcasts, this is the time where they might tell you about uh, an underwear company or a hiring service or something along those lines. I don't have any of that for you, but I do have some calls to action. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content and you are really getting something out of it, uh, do me a favor and stick around till after the show. Um, afterwards, I'm gonna talk to you about anything I want really, uh, but sometimes I'll talk about uh, just thoughts on the show um, or anything going on with Bikes for Death. And I, always, I also take that opportunity to share with people uh, ways that they can support the show if that's something that they're, um, if they're looking to do. For now, the only thing that I ask is that if you are enjoying the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a five-star review. Um, regardless of what platform you are on, if you'll review it on iTunes, that's the one that is, it's the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Um, so I gotta feed that gorilla. We have had 150, no, 158 five-star reviews and one, one, four star review. And I'd like to take this moment real quick to just talk to that one person who left a four star review. Ouch. Why would you do that? I'm trying so hard. I'm really trying. You know, what did I do wrong? Did I stutter? Did I say um too many times? I'm sorry. But I want you to look inside because I think that there's something deeper going on here. If 158 people have listened to this podcast and have acknowledged the fact that it is in fact a five-star podcast and you are the only person that left a four-star review, maybe, maybe this is a reflection of you. 
I don't know, something to think about, right? Food for thought. So don't be like that four-star review guy or girl. It's five-star review showtime. All right, everybody, it's all in good fun. I joke, I kid, but um, please... Uh, it really does help if you will go review the show. That's all I'm going to ask. If you want to hear more, stick around until after the show. But for right now, it's me and it's Rebecca Vader. So let's get to it. I found out about Rebecca from a instagram follower of mine uh his name is future primitive 608 and he he's been following you do you know him um he met he he said he messaged you a couple times and you wrote back and you were real nice and everything yeah like the 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 handle sounds familiar but i'd have to like look and see who it was yeah i I understand we get a lot of them uh but anyway he he hooked us up so i have to give him a shout out and i've got a few questions uh that he's gonna ask you uh but yeah how are you doing you're coming to calling in from where today um i'm in boise idaho awesome i'm doing great (laughs) (laughs) how long uh, are you gonna be in uh boise before you get back on the road do you know no i have no idea um i wasn't expecting to come back to boise um i but i kind of knew like when i when i decided to that it was what I wanted yeah um but I, I have, right. yeah and that's kind of how I do things it's like what am I feeling and I'll be here for as long as it's feeling good cool and my goal is just to like make money and um plan my next adventure well uh to set it up a little bit why don't you tell people what you've been doing for the last 55 ish days uh yeah just give us a brief uh rundown and then we'll kind of dig down into it a little bit later um, so 55 days ago, I got on my bicycle and I just like rode out of Idaho and I've been on an open ended, like I've called it the freedom tour, um, where I've just ridden my bicycle wherever I wanted to go, wherever the wind kind of blew me and mm. um, what was calling and, um, just like adventured hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, it's been fun to watch you. Uh, he sent me your Instagram, and I was hooked immediately. I mean, it, you have a really uh, entertaining page. I mean, you have a great personality. Um, sometimes you get dolled up, but then you'll also show some of the like the grimy and the hard parts, and uh, it's it's a good mixture. Um, and so I I got hooked really quickly, and I I reached out to you almost immediately. I was like, yeah, I'd love to have this girl on the show. I don't know anything about you, never talked to you before, or anything. But I, you know, you're you're out there riding your damn bike, and that's what this is all about. So um, quite entertaining. So I enjoyed it. I'm I'm looking to get you back on the road. I'm I'm a patron. We'll talk about that more too, but uh, I'm supporting her on Patreon because I want to see her uh, back out there so that when I'm at home and I can't be out adventuring, I can I can watch Rebecca. Uh, okay, but before I get too sidetracked, is your last name really Vader? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a great last name. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so uh, Rebecca Vader. And are you a Star Wars fan, I think, from the tattoos? Um, I don't, I, I'm not, I mean, like, I think Star Wars is fine, but, um, I, I don't deserve the last name compared to some people who love Star Wars. <laughs> okay. Well, for the Star Wars people, do you have a favorite Star Wars movie? Um, I guess like the first one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's called either. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah, you definitely don't deserve that name, but it's still a badass name and you dress in all black. So you have that like image going for you for sure. Well, before we uh, got on and started recording, you said to me, doing this bikepacking tour is probably the most normal thing I've ever done. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely like, yeah. So what what were you doing before bikepacking? Um, I have just done all sorts of crazy stuff. I am, a, I'm a very unconventional person and, uh, I was, I've been a freelance artist for a really long time. And, um, right before I went on this trip, I actually, um, talked to this guy into letting me move into his, um, he has an unoccupied, like meat market from like the seventies. It's like this place where it used to have like a Mexican meat market. 
and um he just like stores was storing stuff there and I, I talked him into letting me move in there and the whole winter I just like like converted the basement into like a live work area and um I just used all my money and I, I did it like just all by myself like using random stuff and materials hmm. it was and that was like that's what I did right before I did this trip <laughs> how long did you live there <laughs> Um, just a few months. Okay. It was just like, it was just something I had to do. Like, I just needed to like see it, like make it happen. Okay. Um, but where does this come from? Like, was it the way you were raised and yeah, I mean, you said unconventional, so you know, it's not normal. Yeah. So you have to like almost go out of your way to live this type of lifestyle. You know, it's not easy to just ride your bike out of Idaho and live on the road or convert a meat market. I mean, these are like, you have to intentionally want to be doing those things for a reason, I would assume. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I don't think that I like chose, chose to be different. Um, like as I've always been like, since I was a little kid, I've always been different. Um, my family's very normal. Um, uh, I don't know. I just have always felt like, I've always just wanted to do things like creatively and have fun and like play. I just love to play is yeah. like the main thing. I, I have a hard time like understanding why, you know, what is, what sort of job is worth selling my soul for. And like, there's not like any like stuff out there that I want enough to like work all the time for it. Sure. Um, and so I've just sort of like tried to carve out my own path and like, and make and just do things that I want to do and not things that like people tell me I need to do. Yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah. When, when did you figure that out? I mean, I'm 39 and I feel like I'm just now kind of like figuring out the importance of, you know, your time and how you spend it and what you spend it doing. And yeah. Why are you working a job to pay for a fancy, whatever it is just to impress somebody or, you know, it's like, I, you know, in the last five years or so, I've really kind of become more aware of that and reprioritize a lot of things in my life. So did you like, you know, try the traditional lifestyle for a while and you're like, oh, fuck this. I'm out of here or what? Um, not really. Like I, I've always been like very like opposed to it. Like wow. I, when I was a kid, like I was just a, I was like a weird kid, you know, I got picked on and stuff. And then, um, I was like a punk rocker for way too long. I played in bands and stuff like that. Um, when I was 18, I like flew to Europe to try to live there. Like, I, I don't know. I just, I've always like just done stuff and I, I've never been scared to do stuff. Um, I've gotten even braver as I've gotten older, but, um, the, the hardest part for me was just being so hard on myself for being different. Um, because I've always felt like there was, um, just because I'm different that, that, that there was something wrong with me. And so, um, I spent a lot of time like, um, doing what I was compelled to do cause I have to, cause that's who I am, but also like beating myself up because of it and mm -hmm. feeling like, you know, like maybe I'm not good enough or like there's something wrong with me. And it wasn't until like, honestly, like just within the last year, really, um, I kind of, I, I kind of hit a really low place in my life. Um, and I started reading lots of like, um, books and learning about what life means and like what, you know, ways to, um, you know, love yourself and stuff like that, like self, self-improvement books mm -hmm. and what, whatnot. And once I got a grasp on like, like, basically unfucking my brain out of like all of the torture. I'd I read that book. In. Was it, what is it called? <laughs> Unfuck yourself or something like that. I haven't read that. I oh, there's a book. <laughs> oh, Oh, you just, right. yeah, I'm pretty sure I have it. It's uh yeah. Unfuck yourself or something along those lines. It's, it's good. It, you know, or how not to give a fuck. I don't know. Sorry. But, but yeah, basically they, it seems like they all have like a pretty common theme, which is just like, stop being hard on yourself because you're perfect and there's nothing to be afraid of. And like what everyone else is doing doesn't matter unless it's bringing you joy. Yeah. And so once I understood that, that, that I was allowed to not be hard on myself anymore, that I was allowed to just like, um, be who the fuck I am, which is this weird person that likes to do crazy things. Um, life got really amazing quickly and it's continuing to get amazing. And, um, yeah. Wow. So this all happened within the last year? 
this kind of discovery and letting yourself, you know, free from all of the doubts and criticisms of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that, actually that part of it, like that extreme part of it really happened, like going into tour um, and being on tour is what really solidified this stuff for me. Like yeah. really was like what you're doing is correct. It's like proof of concept. Yeah. Like, like literally fuck everybody else. Like, yeah, go have fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I totally get it. It's not a rude thing, but like you need to be you and, um, and not feel the pressures from society. Um, if you're feeling something like that, that's on society. It's not on you. And if somebody's being an asshole or a bitch to you or whatever, then it's like, well, fuck you. I don't, I don't need that in my life. Like that's not gonna, that's not doing anything for me. So why would I want that in my life? I'm not going to give it any time, any attention. I'm not going to feel bad about it. That's your problem. You know, uh, put that on them, you know, don't carry it around with you. Those are, those are good things that I'm sure a lot of people struggle with. I mean, I know we, uh, in this society, it's like, uh, I mean, we're bombarded by images, uh, in so many different ways of what you should look like, or, you know, what's cool and what bike you should ride and all that kind of stuff. And you don't listen to the podcast and that's great. But, um, one thing that we, we, I really try to talk about is, is, is just do it your way. You know, if you want to ride a road bike, if you want to ride a fat bike, if you want to bike pack and have the coolest gear, or you just get some ropes and tie some shit on your bike and go, then like all that's good. And the, you know, cycling should not be a space where there's judgment and, Oh, you're doing it the wrong way and elitism and all that stuff. So, um, you're very much in line with some of the the core values of the show and the things that I really uh, try to preach, which is, which I kind of assume from following on Instagram. I mean, you get a, a decent feel for someone, especially, like I said, you have a tendency to, to really share what's going on. Um, there's actually one that I wanted to read an Instagram, uh, post. Um, and I think I know the answer to it based on what you just said, but, uh, the first taste of true freedom is like a drug letting go of all the things that bind you. Once you understand what is beyond your current scope of perception, there is no turning back. I promise you, What comes after your fear is worth any risk you are afraid of taking. You remember writing that? I do. Do you remember like what? Because it it sounds like that's kind of uh, a result of the things you were talking about of letting go. And, uh, you know, it's like your real freedom came not from doing all the different things that made you different and all the adventures. The real freedom, I'm putting words in your mouth. The real freedom came from like letting yourself go of all that um, self doubt. We can, we can try as many actions as we want. Um, we can try to make things any way we want to and do as many like things to do it. But, um, you, you can't actually be free and you can't actually be happy until you, um, until you do it internally. And, um, that was basically what that meant was like, I like let, let go that that's actually a lyric from this band called the sword. Like let go of all the, let go of all that binds you. Your kind will always find you. And, um, it's not about stuff at all. Yeah. Um, tomorrow I can decide fuck riding bikes, you know, I'm going to go get on a pogo stick or whatever, or I'm going (laughs) to, you know, I'm going to go like be an arborist or like, who knows, who knows? I'm, I'm always receptive and open to whatever makes me feel good. Yeah. And, um, that is, that is like, that is the most important thing that I can tell anybody, like, um, figure out what makes you feel good and just do that forever. Like continuously make yourself feel good. And if something stops making you feel good at any point, you're not obligated to it. You, you have no, um, you have nothing to prove to anyone. Um, I mean like with my, with my bike tour, you know, people, people would try to say like, Oh, well, this is what you should be doing. And it's like, I'm glad, like, I'm glad that you care, but like, this has nothing to do with you. Like absolutely nothing. Yeah. That's what I'm talking. I mean, that's exactly what I'm talking about is there shouldn't be that type of, Oh, you're doing it wrong. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm doing it wrong. I'm living my life the wrong way. I'm riding my bike the wrong way. I mean, what, what does that mean? It's completely ludicrous. Well, people just, um, 
if you look at the people who say these things and you look at their lives, you you can usually clearly see like ways you could, you know, give them a, advice on how to improve <laughs> their scenario, right? Like usually sure. these are the people that have like really strong opinions about things, but also like might be lacking in certain areas, and um, they're they're just trying to find their own peace and their own happiness, and they're still in the mindset that it's everybody else's fault that that things are the way they are in their life when in reality it's like they just need to learn how to love themselves and and allow themselves to be who they are yeah. and stop being scared yeah whenever you're really like you're saying focused on the things that make you happy and focused on surrounding yourself with the people and the places that bring you joy you're not going to have a lot of time or really desire to uh to be critical of other people have you got any uh criticism for being a woman and solo touring um or maybe concern is better a better word than criticism you know like we live in a very fear-based society and people people will give you every excuse and every reason to fear everything always. Um, and I did get a lot of people, um, especially before I left, that were extraordinarily skeptical and would say, like, are you scared you're going to get raped? Or are you scared, like, you, do you, are you bringing a gun and all of this shit? And I'm like, if I was scared, I would just, like, what's the point of being alive? Like I have to be completely fearless. Like I have to literally not be scared of anything mm. at all. And, um, I believe like anytime I start being scared of something is when I bring it into my experience. And that's when like, like fucked up stuff happens. Mm. But if, if I keep a positive attitude and I make smart decisions, um, and I follow my heart and I follow my gut feeling and I listen to the way I feel about like situations and scenarios, like I'll be fine. And it's just when I go against that and when I buy into the fear, that's when that's when crazy things happen, you know? I don't um, know, actually. I'm you know, I've I've never been a woman and I've never been on tour for fifty five days, so I don't know what that's like. Um and and certainly I, I could project some fears onto you, you know. I mean I could have fears of my own if I were gonna go out for fifty five days. I mean, I think anyone could. Um so but I guess I'm really interested to know for specifically maybe the women who are listening, how did you get to where you are where, I mean, you're fearless and you're fierce and you're confident and, you know, you know who you are. Obviously, this didn't just happen. I mean, do you have, I don't know, some advice you could share for other women who are listening that are interested in doing this kind of fun adventures? Yeah, definitely. Like, love yourself because, like, you're perfect and you're completely capable of doing every single thing that you want and it has nothing to do with the fact that you're a woman or not you're perfectly strong um you're gonna get stronger you only get confident and um you know at peace with yourself and um you're, you're only able to do these things if you actually like go for it and you just have to like uh stop 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 worrying about it i guess <laughs> and um don't listen to anyone don't fucking listen to anyone but yourself like just do and it the more yeah, oh, wait, that was a you, Nike quote. <laughs> well, and the more you practice that, like the more um, like every time you take a step in that direction, you get stronger and you get um, the confidence and you validate what you're believing in. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just at the point where it's like no one else is going to like fix me. No one else is going to. Uh, you know, give me this like golden ticket into happiness and like this beautiful life that I want. Like if I, if I rely on other people for that, they're just going to suck me into their equation and like, um, they're, they're wanting me to fix them too. And I can't do that. So it's like, go, just go be happy. And how did you, yeah. how did you, you know, train to overcome the fears? Like, you know, specifically let's talk for this uh, tour that you went on. Um, you know, did you just educate yourself a lot or is it really just a, a mindset of not allowing fear to be a part of your, you know, interaction with the world and the environment? It's a mindset. 100%. There wow. was no formal, no formal training. Um, I just was, I just made the decision that I wasn't going to let fear control me anymore. Wow. Touche. I mean, that, that's really, that's powerful. Um, it's it sounds easy, right? It's it's easy to say that, but I mean that's a really impressive thing to be able to 
remove that from your life and not not allow it to be a part of it, your existence. Do you do you meditate? I do. Is that is that part of it? Yeah, absolutely. And just um, uh, reading stuff and like finding things that resonate with you um, that will help you and and keep you positive. Um, it's a huge deal. And with with um, doing something challenging and physical, like um, like any sort of bike touring, where you're doing a lot of climbing and like long distances and stuff like that, um, you have all of this time in your in your mind. And um, no matter how beautiful the scenery is, after like several hours in it, it becomes somewhat redundant. So you're you're left with yourself, and so that gives you um, all of this free time to either dwell and have a miserable experience and think about, Oh, like my legs hurt. And <laughs> I still have like six more hours to go or like, you know, you, you can, you can make it as shitty as you choose, or you could be like, wow, this is incredible. This is a really great opportunity for me to pro- practice positivity hmm. and, um, l- like teach myself skills, um, that are going to help me personally, whatever that may be. Like one of the things that I do personally, and I'll, I'll give my advice. Yeah. Um, I'm writing and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in this great feeling and then slowly, like, let's say it's usually when with climbing, um, I start, it's like right when you start climbing or before it was like, right when I started to climb, I would get like a, a negative memory or I would think of something that, um, didn't feel good. And so I would be doing this climb and I, and I, and I would know I'm doing something like physically challenging because mentally I would start thinking of, uh, mentally hard things. And, um, I would practice, um, like, uh, noticing butterflies and flowers Mm -hmm. and birds. And it wasn't long of doing like after, after like just doing this, um, practicing this, that pretty soon I have barn owls flying above my head, like feet above my head. Um, I see a freaking bald eagle, like 10 feet in front of me. I have butterflies every single time a a thought that is not making me feel good butterflies are all of a sudden like flying into my face or you know like distracting me it's Mm -hmm. like once you start practicing it and like really take control of what you're thinking about and what you want to focus on all of a sudden like these beautiful things expose themselves to you because they're there they're always around you we just we we're so stuck in our limiting self-beliefs that we never we never see them yeah yeah. Well, we're focused on the wrong things, like you're saying. That that's something that also I've I've become aware of, and I try to practice myself. <clears throat> I mean, I'll look at anything, a, a tiny rock that I think is interesting. I love wildlife. I mean, that's a big attraction for me. I do a lot of night riding right now, and there's like scorpions out at night, and snakes, and rabbits, and armadillos, and raccoons, and I mean, you just see tons of wildlife. And if you're focused on those things. You're not really thinking about my leg hurts or my butt hurts or or whatever, you know, and and it's that that is kind of a for me, it's been a really empowering thing to learn. And then I'm trying to grow that side of my brain. I'm trying to um, teach myself just through experiences. The only way to do it is you get yourself in a tough experience. I I mean, I was just doing this the other night on a ride. I started feeling kind of sick. I had eaten too close to when I rode. Anyway, I, I, I was feeling like my, like an upset stomach. And I, and I, instead of being like, oh, this sucks, blah, 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 I did exactly what you said. And I'm like, okay, good. This is an opportunity to, you know, ride whenever I don't feel well and work through it. You know, um, it, it's just all about how you frame that experience. Uh, the, the other one that I'll do is if I'm like, really tired. I mean, if it's been like a really long day and carrying a lot of weight, it's been hot and you're just really dragging. Um, I'll, I'll start to think to myself, Oh man, this is awesome. I've been working all day. I've been working hard all day so I could feel like this. So I could feel the pain. So I could sweat and my hands would hurt and my knees would hurt. I have earned this and I am going to just sit here and enjoy it. You know, I'm going to, you know, so I, I do all kinds of mental gymnastics whenever I'm riding to, um, like I said, I'm still learning. It's a fun tool that you have. Your brain is an amazing, wonderful, crazy place and, and learning how to frame this world that we live in and how we interact with it, uh, make sense of it. Um, it's not an easy thing to do, but it's a worthwhile venture. 
Um, and you're seem to be proof of that. Yeah. And I, I don't think we ever stop learning. No. And, um, and, and that's the beauty of it. That's the fun. Like we, we get to continue continuously expand and grow like our experience. Right. And, and just by doing, you know, figuring out how to handle these like physical challenges, like riding, doing these hard rides and whatnot. I think that translates over into just regular life where there's no way you can spend all of these hours on a bicycle and like going through all of this stuff and doing all of this mental training to stay in the moment and stay um, stoked on what you're doing. And then like go back into regular society and like let something stupid and petty bother you. Like there's just, you, you just don't care anymore. You're just like, that has nothing to do with anything, and be, <laughs> you know? And it's like, once you just like, once you just like get that, um, you find whatever it is that you enjoy doing and you, you just like learn how to stay there as long as possible. And that, that good feeling, um, things that, things that suck before, like they just don't matter anymore. Yeah. Going out. Um, I, my connection is with the wilderness, you know, the outdoors and going out into remote places and, uh, and really feeling at home and at peace and, and happy, um, and then, yeah, going back to work and, you know, life, um, it does help to have that perspective. Um, for me, it does, you know, cause those things really matter and I make them a priority in my life and I make sure that I do go out. I mean, I have to work, I have a job. I mean, you know, I don't have to, right. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm giving advice from Rebecca, I got two, I got two daughters though. That's a tough one. You got any advice for me? Um, as far as like what I, what I think you should do. Well, yeah. Like, okay. So, uh, I mean, how do you, how would you, and maybe you've never given this any thought, but how would you live a lifestyle similar to yours if you were married and had two kids? Um, just by every single day being completely honest with yourself and saying like, what do I want today? If I don't want to like the, the whole thing with children and stuff like that, like that is, um, that is also just like the way people view how you're supposed to treat children and how you're supposed to raise them and stuff like that. Like anything that you're doing that doesn't feel good is because you are, um, you're afraid of getting judged or you're afraid mm -hmm. of getting like frowned upon and stuff like that. But it's like your children are not going to die if you decide to go do something nice for yourself, you know, like, Oh yeah. Like go, go, go be the best version of you. Like go, go make yourself extraordinarily happy. And I promise you that everybody around you will benefit. Yeah. Whatever well, that, that means. Yeah, I agree. Well, I agree with that a hundred percent. And that, that really is kind of how I live. Not kind of, that is how I live my life. I, I work from home. So I, I'm see my kids a lot. I'm lucky. Um, and I love having a family and I love having little girls around. They're beautiful. Um, but I also really love and need time to get, get away and, reconnect and reset and then it yeah it, it fills that void and it makes it yeah it checks that box for me that i need um and then i can come home and i'm a good dad and you know a good good little worker and i make the money and all that fancy stuff so they can have a house to live in i think when you um when you're when you're just trying so hard to fill the status quo of what society tells us a father or a mother or anything is supposed to be. Um, and you're trying to, you're going against how you naturally innately feel and like the things that you actually want, the experiences you want out of life. You're going to be stressed out. You're going to be an asshole. You're mm -hmm. going to be, um, snappy. You're going to be telling, you know, you're going to be doing things based upon stuff you don't really believe. And so I don't think that there's a benefit to that. Like, yeah. sure, sure. Like you might be making what you perceive as, face for like everyone else but honestly like i'm just gonna say this clearly like people don't fucking care about you as much as, they th as you think they do like yeah that goes for every human being yeah like, people literally don't fucking think about you as much as you think they do and even if they do who fucking cares like <laughs> who fucking cares yeah yeah no i i agree you yeah well I, i'm just gonna say that i agree because i could hit that for a while but I, I just wanted to come back to the kids thing real quick and say that I being a father to kids and not being really tied to like what social expectations of a way to raise a kid. I mean, 
we live in a normal house and stuff like that. But, you know, my kid was uh, running around buck naked in our cul-de-sac the other day, chasing a, one of the girls uh, on our bicycle, you know, up and down the street. And, um, you know, I let them get hurt. We, we go out and they, you know, we have a saying in our house, dirt don't hurt. So, I mean, go out, play, climb trees, get dirty, make mud pies, build shitty ramps in the backyard. I built a berm and a ramp and stuff in the backyard for the girls to hit up. And um, so, yeah, definitely, I think you're right. Like, if you take a, a broader approach and, and you just look at that kid and you're like, all right, what am I going to do with this kid right now that's going to be fun? And sometimes it's just hanging out and having baby talk with them or uh, sometimes it's riding bikes or whatever it is, but, um, you have a good point that just take advantages of every day. Cause that's, I mean, right. That's all you got. That's what we always say. You have this moment, whatever it is, this is your moment well, right here. And it's you, like you, you are who is important. And I mean, like, I'm not saying your children aren't important or your loved ones aren't important, but it's like, if you can't, if you aren't capable of loving and, and caring for yourself fully and completely, how how do you how do you um, feed others if your cup isn't overflowing? You yeah. know, like you your cup needs to be like beyond full for you to give anybody else any sort of abundance. Right. Um, I can't be a warm showers host when I'm on the road. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, like, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I, that speaks to me uh, very near and dear to my heart. I've come to terms with who I am a while ago. I went through a bunch of shit in my life and I came out the other side and I was like, okay, you know, at the age of like 21, I really just said, okay, what do you want out of life? Who are you? Who are the people that you want to surround yourself with? What, you know, what do you want out of life? Who the fuck are you? I mean, really, I asked myself that I'm like, and I, and I just, I just decided, you know, I'm like, okay, these are the things that are important to me and this is what I'm going to do. And once you come to terms with who you are and you like who you are, you're like, okay, I can, I can be this guy. I can wake up and go to sleep every single day and not worry about anything really, because I'm good. I, you know, I took care of myself. Um, and then, then you're, yeah, you're in a much better position to be helpful to other people and, and be there for them. And, um, yeah, it's, it, yeah. So let's talk about um, the catalyst for the Freedom Tour. Like, let's let's go ahead and get into that. So you're in Idaho, and one day you're like, "I'm going to go ride my bike, and I might not come back for a while." So how does that how does that happen, and why? Um, I I love riding my bicycle. Um, it's my favorite thing in the entire world. Um, I I will do it all day, every day as long as I want to. And I will like always. Yeah. Um, good. but I was, I was, I was riding road bikes. Um, a friend of mine talked me into getting like a nicer road bike. Um, cause I just drew like was riding this hunk of shit for like eight, six or eight years or whatever. He talked me into getting a, like a nicer bike. And so I get, I get really into it and I'm like, I'm, I'm the young weird chick, like in a full kit, like riding 30 miles a day in the roads it's not a really a common thing. I, I didn't even know there was other people that rode bikes. Like I didn't know there was a community. I would, I thought I was just some weirdo. Uh -huh. Um, so I'm doing this for a while. And one night at a, I was at a bar with one of my best friends and she was seeing this guy and we started talking and he was like, Oh yeah, you like riding bikes. He's like, you should try bike packing. And I was like, well, what the fuck's bike packing? And he's like, Oh, and he explains it to me. And I was like, you're telling me that there's a bike that can take me anywhere. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, are you fucking serious? And so like the, it was like the moment I heard about bike packing, it was just like, it was incredible to me because I've never mountain biked in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I like, I think I would love to do it, but I had never like, I never, I wasn't interested enough. It like the perp, like the, the, like road biking to me, was like commute, you know, I'd commute yeah. and I thought it was super fun. So I just did, that was what I did. So he tells me about this and I'm like, wow, like there's, I've never heard of something that was sounded that incredible. Like, yeah. um, and so I sort of just like marinated and, you know, thought about it for like a year or two and then, um, probably less, like probably like a year. Um, and then it was when I was in the, the meat market doing that like whole thing, which was one of the weirdest things I've ever done, but also like, it was so like vital that I did it. 
because I got to a point where it was like, I was done. I got to a stopping point and then I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I just created this like cage around myself. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I've moved several times and I have, um, all, I still keep accumulating all of this shit. And, um, I just looked around and I was like, I don't want any of this. Like, I don't want any of it. There's, mm. there's nothing in here that I want anything to do with anymore. So I made the decision. I was like, I'm going to fucking sell all my shit. I'm going to sell my cars. I'm going to rehome my pets because as much as I love my animals and that was like one of the most, um, that was one of the most difficult things I've ever done. No doubt. I was, I was not right. I was not a good caretaker of my pets because of my, my circumstances and what I needed in my life. And so I made the mature decision to find them a better place to be. And, um, I'm really glad I did. And I, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate because I have people that are love me and they love my animals and they take care of them. So I can still go see them and stuff. But, um, that's cool. That was like, that was a huge deal. Um, so I got rid of them. I sold my car and I bought my ogre and, um, I was just like, I'm just going to fucking ride my bike until I find something that makes me happy. And I did. (laughs) <laughs> so that was the start of the freedom tour yeah so why did you call it the freedom i mean obviously it's just you were free from everything you sold everything you were on the road go anywhere you want to go what about let's talk about dirty money what's it what yeah i mean either you're whenever i see people who are touring um i think that they have a lot of money or they're maybe doing some like side work along the way to keep going. I mean, I've seen basically both ways, but yeah, I mean, talk about the dirty money aspect of, of bike touring. Um, so I'm just going to say like, I've never been really great at making money. Um, I'm working on that because now that was one of the, the main, um, the main things that I learned from this tour is how vital money is and how important it actually is to me. <laughs> Cause before I was like, I don't fucking need money. I have everything I want all the time. You know? Okay. Um, but the reality is that there's no shortage. Um, money comes in all shapes and sizes and all forms. Like you can get money any way you fucking want. It's like, how, how do you want to get money is basically <laughs> what it boils down to. And I, I, I met, I met lots of different people, um, on the trans America route and on the great divide and stuff. And like, they all had their own stories and their own backgrounds. I didn't meet anyone else who was just like, fuck it. But everyone, <laughs> everyone was like, you know, they were in like a time constraint and they had it like planned out. Right. Most, of them were, most of them were old and retired. Cause yeah. they didn't think they could do it any, anytime sooner. And it's bullshit. Like you could, you could fucking go right now and you'd be fine. All you have to do is like, no, that's going to be okay. Um, prepare as best as you can. But, um, I had help. People helped me every step of the way. People helped me. People I didn't know, um, complete random strangers. Like, and they didn't just like help me. Like they like came out of the woodworks, like smiling, like, like, let me help you. This is so cool. Like here, what do you need? Like, and it just worked out. It was like, I, I could, you know, the kind of, and, 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 I'm not saying like you, I mean, you could do this if you want to, but I don't rely on the kindness of, I, I did rely on the kindness of others a lot, but like I didn't do, I didn't go into the, the tour thinking, okay, someone's going to support me doing right. this. Right. Yeah. I went in there. I, I saved as much money as I possibly could. I liquidated all of my assets. Um, I, you know, I planned it out and I talked to a lot of people who had done tours before, like long term, continuously. And they were like, okay, this is like, this is basically like the cheapest form of um, like travel that you could possibly do because you're, you're as long as your bike doesn't have any like major malfunctions, Mm -hmm. um, like food is inexpensive if you're not eating out every night. And if you're not staying in hotels, you're basically fucking, you can, you can live off like five bucks a day in or less, you know, at Taco Bell anywhere or just like (laughs) with the bike packing, you know, I could carry five days worth of food in my frame bag and like, um, just learn those tricks of the trade. I did run out of money and then I did have friends step in and help me out. And then I was like, okay, now I have to start figuring out like, you know, a, a, a way to actually make money on tour. Like I can't, I can't just keep going 
and like asking people for handouts. Like yeah. I can, I can, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Right. right. So, um, so, so is that what brings me. you to Boise? You're kind of taking a, taking a break and yeah, figuring out some money and get back on the road. Yeah. And just, um, you know, I was just following my heart and like I, I had bought actually before I came back to Boise, I was, um, I was heading for another thousand miles to Arizona and I was like, I'm just going to go to Arizona cause that's just the decision I've made, you know? And, um, so I started writing to Arizona and I got to Spanish Fork, Utah. Um, and I, I stopped by a shop. Like I had some friends, uh, give me some money so that I can like, you know, go a little bit further and, it just buys you time to figure things out a little bit more. And, um, mm -hmm. so I get to Spanish fork and I go into a bike shop and he, he looks at my bike and he's like, yeah, you're not like, you're definitely not like riding a thousand miles without like some repairs, you know? Oh, okay. And, and I was like, I'm not going to ask people to fix my bike for me and I'm not going to, um, do that. I, and, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to, I bought a plane ticket to Arizona I was like, I'm going to box up my, my bike and I'm going to ship it. And then I'm going to get to Arizona and start working and figure it out. Well, I, I, I'm sitting here in Spanish Fork and I'm like, I don't want to fucking be in Spanish Fork for a week until my flight leaves. Like, <laughs> I don't, and then I was like, I don't want to go to Arizona either. Like, what am I doing? And I was like, I love Boise. Uh -huh. Like, I, I love Boise. I've had an incredible experience. Things are hard because it's the end of the road for me. Like, it's the end of the, the Freedom Tour. Like, it's time to it's time to go home to Boise and yeah. be cool with the fact that Boise is my home because I love Boise. Yeah. And and so I rode I rode back to Ogden and um one of my friends was amazing and came and picked me up and I came back to Boise. You we were messaging when you were in uh in Ogden and you seemed a little frustrated or I'm not sure what you were experiencing but it seemed like kind of a tough time. Was that like the toughest time that you had faced up until that point? Absolutely not. So, so you were talking to me and I think I remember it was, um, I call them like days of contrast it's from what I've experienced in this whole thing. is like, I have these extreme highs. Like I'll have a day, three days of just like overwhelming appreciation and like, beauty and uh meeting incredible people and just having fun and just like like just overwhelmingly like amazing experiences and then i'll have a day and they've gotten less they've gotten way less but like it's like the day i'll have a day where i'm just like um i would get down like really really mm. down mm. and but I, I got good at recognizing like what it was, was just contrast. And I would be like, okay, like this is a day I need to process these things that are going on in my life and like work through them. Um, and, and I, I don't hate those days, you know, like they, they're not my favorite. Like, obviously we want these like really fun days where we're like yeah. super high, but the days of contrast are the days where you grow mm -hmm. and where I was like, okay, like this is, um, th these are things I need to process. Like these are, like I need to process these emotions. I need to process like what I've just gone through. I need to process um, the fact that like I'm in a fucking hotel room with blood stains on the sheets and there's like crackheads <laughs> running up and down the the hallways screaming shithole. You know? It's oh like, my gosh, oh, that's yeah, a real like, story. I, yeah, I and the night before that, I slept under a bush that smelled like piss. You know? Like oh. so you. It's just like, but. It, there's so much to it, you know, it's just like, there's just so much to it. So I do have days where I, um, I'll get down, but I don't, I don't like hate those days anymore. I'm just like, this is just me like processing and growing. Yeah. And I mean, then, nobody has the, a good day every single day. It's okay to have bad days. Um, especially when you're doing something as hard, uncertain, I mean, you didn't know where you were going to sleep. You didn't know a lot of stuff. I mean, everything was uncertain. So I think the fact that you handled as well as you seem to is quite impressive. I mean, I don't know how I would, I've never been on a 55 day bike tour. I don't know how I do. And to, to retouch on the subject of the women thing. Um, this is just my personal experience. I don't, I can't like speak for anyone else. The one thing that I can say was, uh, 
that I had that, that day I was actually kind of dealing with, it was pretty disheartening to me is, um, like most of the people that I needed help from were men. And, um, it was almost like I knew I, and I knew a lot of these people, you know, like they're friends of mine and stuff. And it was like, not all of them, actually, I would say a majority of majority of them were like incredible, but occasionally it was like, I got like treated and questioned for, um, my, like, they were like, like, for example, I went in, I went in and I would be, I'd say something like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be here for a few days and I'm going to, um, see if I'm going to fill the place out to see if it might be somewhere I want to live. Mm -hmm. Right. And everything would be fine there. It would be like totally normal, totally cool. But by like the second night or whatever, it would be like, well, what are you going to give me in return? And it's like, I'm not going to give you anything in return because you're just being a friend. Right. And I've, I've hosted people my yeah. whole life. Yeah. So I, I know how this exchange is supposed to go, but <laughs> suddenly it's like, well, you're just using me then. What? Oh, I'm using. Yeah. And so that like that happened to me a few times and I, I had people like I, I got like screamed at once for that. Um, and I had stuff like that happen when when I would in, in my mind, I'd think, man, if if I was a male, I feel like um, and this could be wrong, but I feel like maybe that scenario wouldn't happen as often. It would be like, oh, yeah, sure, man. You want to like build a place out, like see if you can get a job. Sure, you can crash with me for a week. No big deal. Hmm. You know, but it was like. Um, it was kind of like, oh, like, well, either you're using, like, if you're not putting out, like, you're using me, you know? <laughs> and it's like, no, you're like, you, you're, I was very clear what I'm doing here. I'm on a fucking bike tour. I, yeah. If I don't, if I don't sleep on your couch, I'm sleeping under a bush. Like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The joys of being a woman on a bike tour. So going into it, uh, what kind of training did you do with, like, your gear? And I mean, you were, you're a road cyclist. So like how competent were you with cycling, with your gear, with camping, with, I mean, the whole experience that you were going to embark on. I mean, yeah. What, what kind of experience did you go into it with? I, I didn't know anything. Like I still don't know how to work on my bike really. And, um, I'd never been backpacking. I've never been out mountain biking. And, um, but I do know how to network. So I just like reached out to people that I knew did that mm -hmm. and I asked I asked them if they'd be willing to talk to me and I ended up um like meeting up with everybody I knew who was in the bike industry or who was an avid like cyclist or um even I even talked to someone who works for the government like whose job is like they basically like drop him off in the mountains and he just like is out there putting out little fires all all summer long oh nice um and so I would ask I would think like okay this guy probably knows like what's the lightest stuff I can bring in like the smallest amount so, um, they get, I got a lot of my advice doing that. Um, and then I bought all of the stuff, um, you know, slowly and, and sold, you know, as I was selling stuff off. And, um, and in the meantime, I just, because I, I was kind of deciding to do this when it was still cold out and, um, I just was like, okay, I need to just like get back on my bike and start riding and then like push myself and go further than I ever have gone. Um. And so I started doing, you know, 30 miles a day and I was like, okay, I could do that. And then I just started commuting like crazy, you know, and then it was like 60 miles a day. And then pretty soon it was like, okay, I'm going to go do my first like climb. Mm -hmm. And I did a climb and I was like, oh my God, like that was so hard. <laughs> but like I did it. And then, um, and then I did like my first, um, out of town trip and I, and I, I, I tried as often as possible to do it by myself because I was like, I'm not going to have people around there, um, around all the time to like guide me yeah. and stuff like that. So, um, even when I did my first trip out of town, it was like a big group thing, but I, I went a day earlier and it was like, it was like the most challenging thing I'd ever done, but it was like one of the coolest things I'd ever done. Cause I was like, I climbed two fucking mountains by myself <laughs> and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. And then I did my first hundred miles that weekend too, like stretch. And I was just like, I, I was like, I could do anything now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm once you scared. figure that out, once you figure out that your, uh, your limitations are only in your mind, and there's a lot more untapped potential. And like you said, you never stop growing and you never stop untapping that potential. I mean, you'll be able to ride 200 miles a day, maybe if you want to. I mean, you could. You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like once you know, once you unlock that, now you know. You're like, okay, I, I haven't ridden 200 miles in a day, but I know I could. Um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 
it's a that's a really powerful thing that uh that people who bike pack and i'm sure in other endurance sports as well but you know people who bike pack learn about themselves and i think it's super empowering for people so you are a very honest person and which is great and a lot of times whenever we see um you know just stuff on social media or whatnot you don't always get like the real like okay how was it really out there you you were posting videos of uh you heaving your bike over fences and stuff that was good that was fun there was, it was like a three-part series on how to get lift your big ass bike over a tall ass fence and not break all your shit that was that was a great video <laughs> the, the day i rode on private property and it was it was the most incredible ride of my life yeah like, it was the most beautiful place i've ever been well let's and talk it about was, it and not get you in trouble so we won't say where it was or anything but uh but yeah well, honestly like I, I wasn't like, oh, I'm just going to go like be disrespectful and ride on these people's property. I, I use Google Maps a lot of the times and Google Maps took me there. And when I got there, there was a fence, you know, like a, a locked gate. And I'm yeah. looking over at the highway and I was like, no fucking way am I going to ride <laughs> on the highway when I see this gravel trail right in front of me. And so and I was like, there was no there was no no trespassing signs, but the gate was locked. So I was like, OK, clearly like you probably shouldn't go over here. But I was like, no, like, I don't care. Like, it's, <laughs> I'm going to ask for forgiveness this time instead of permission. So, so I throw my bike over the fence and I knew, I knew it was going to be like either a, like, I knew it was going to be crazy no matter what, because that was a loaded bike. I didn't even. Yeah. You, know, you didn't unload I, it or anything. You just, no, <laughs> you didn't chunk it, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I like, I strategically worked it over, but I knew it would be an interesting video regardless. So I was like, yeah. I'm going to film this. Um, I get over the first fence and I start riding and I'm like, okay, this is like pretty nice. And then I get to another fence and I'm like, well, shit, there's another fence. And so I'm like, okay. And this time I, it was bar, I, there was barbed wire like down the road. So I like slide it into the barbed wire. I get all cut up. There's but like, you know, I'm in this like bushes and all this stuff. Then there's another fence and it was like, okay, I did this a few times, but once you, once you're over like one fence, that was hard to cl- throw your bike over. You're just like, I'm not going to go back. Like mm. I'm not going to go back and ride on the highway and like, Restore yeah. my bike over. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah. Well, after the third one, all of a sudden, like the scenery started changing, and it was like, I, I I felt like I was in the middle of the world. Like there was no one around. There was no vehicles. There was no like signs of man. Just this trail. Hmm. And I'm on this trail, and I hear all of these wild bir- uh, like birds chirping, and there's wildflowers everywhere, and like grass, and it was like desert, and um, it was it was so serene. And so I, that's when I started post and I had service for some reason. <laughs> and so I started posting like the videos and I was just like, like, I, I, I love watching them. Cause I love seeing like how happy I was and just like awestruck by the scenery. Yeah. And, and the further I went, it was like, it, it, it did not like cease to, um, prove me wrong when I thought I just saw the prettiest thing yet. Uh-huh. It was like, no, I was like, no, uh-huh. you thought that was pretty. Like, Keep Wait till going. you see this. Wow. Yeah. And so I climbed for about 15 miles and um, I get over like the last fence, right? That I throw my bike over. And all of a sudden it starts going downhill for 18 miles. Yeah, I baby. Downhill. And while I was going downhill, it was like, I thought I, I thought I honestly, like I, there was one moment I was like, I was like, am I dead? <laughs> because this is like, this is too perfect. There's freaking pronghorns like running in front of me on the trail there's this like huge lake. There's all these pelicans. Like the lake's like white because it's got so many pelicans in it. Wow. There's like these giant rocks jutting out of the side of the mountain. Like it, it was like I've never seen anything like it. And it was and I was going downhill. <laughs> Didn't you? Is that? I think you posted a video and you were in tears because you were so happy. Was that that time? Do you remember? Or I maybe it was a, a a story. But yeah, you were just like you were just very emotional and you were talking I, about the, I, I cried all the time. Yeah. Out of happiness. Yeah. Like there's, there, see some of the things you see are just like, you, you can't process it. And, and you know, when you get there by, by powering yourself on a bicycle, it's just like to fill that level of human, like of being alive to fill that, to get, that's like when you, it's like a level up of mm. existence. Like, yeah. 
when you're just like, this is the, this is the most incredible experience I've ever had right here, right now. Right. And love- I'm so appreciative of it. Yeah, that's amazing. It's good to recognize those. And there's something different about um, riding your bike and being a part of the environment. You know, you're, all your senses are engaged. It's different if you were to drive your car or, you know, an ATV or something. You just, for whatever reason, it loses it. You see the same thing, but you're not experiencing it in the same way. On a bicycle, you can sneak up on wildlife and they won't know you're there. And sometimes they won't be spooked and you get to have those more intimate interactions with them. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's a different thing when you earn it, when you're there because you should be there because you earned your way there. You pedaled your bike, you camped, you climbed all the fences, you did all the things and now you're there. And because you're there, you get to experience all this. Do you, do you know what that is? Do you know what that connection is to the work you put in and the, the feeling you have of, of experiencing something like that? It's called, it's the proof. It's the proof that there is something beyond fear. Yeah. Because you're like, I'm doing this really hard thing and I don't know what's at the end of it, but I'm still going to do it. Right. And, and even though, even though we can just like lo- logically say like, oh, you're just going to be doing a lot of like pedaling or you're just riding your bike and it's going to be, here are all the reasons it's not going to be fun. But you're like, no, I think this whole thing is going to be amazing. And then when you get to the end of it and you see that pot of gold, you're like, I know that. I know that life is amazing. Yeah. This is, this is proving it to me right here that life is actually amazing. Right. Well, and the other thing is, I mean, we're talking about butterflies and rainbows, but you know, you might've had three or four really hard days before that where it was raining or cold or you're hungry. Um, and then on night four or five, you get, you see something like that. Uh, you know, it always seems to come after some adversity that, uh, that stuff like that, the proof comes, as you say. So yeah. let's talk about one of the hardest days. Do you remember the hardest day on the tour? The the hardest day on tour was definitely Chief Joseph Pass. Um, I can't. I don't know how many miles it was, but um, I was riding with someone, and um, he was a really nice guy. But um, I, I I I like most of, like lately. I, I really want to get a little more um, comfortable riding with myself, like mentally. I, I want to um, be a little more conditioned before I bring other people into that because it is such like a, um, a challenging thing to do. And you kind of have to like get, you know, get into your zone and stuff. Um, I'm really close to it, but I would love to like take people with me hmm. at some point, but I want to be like solid. But at, at this time, this was earlier on in the, the trip and I still wasn't like um, as skilled as I am now. And so I did this really hard climb, really long. It was in Montana. Um, I'm with this guy. There's these strong headwinds, and it was like sweltering hot. And um, it it just it took forever. We saw a horrible accident on the side of the road where someone probably lost their life. And it was like, and we were you know in it because you're in the shit no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it was so hard. And the the natural response that I have was like, I have to blame someone for this because like, that's just like how we are. And, and, and then I step back and go like, no, like I'm, I'm choosing to be here. Like I'm choosing this challenge. Like mm-hmm. I don't have to do this if I don't want to, yeah. but, um, we get to the top, um, and it's hot and then it starts raining and the rain was hot. And then <laughs> we we're going downhill. And usually when we go downhills, I'm stoked. But by this point, I'm just like, I'm just like annoyed that I'm with someone. He's not doing anything wrong, right? right? Nothing wrong. But I'm just like, I'm just like, I just don't want to be with a person right now. Yeah, and you got to think person, about him. It's just occupying a place in your mind, and yeah, like, uh, uh, is this person doing okay? Are they? Yeah, are you we just keeping to... up with? Yeah, and that's it's like it was too much for me at that point in in my um, yeah. I've been there. I know growth. what you. Yeah. So um, we get to a little town, and right when we show up, it's like mosquitoes you know covering us and the next day i just basically was like listen dude like you're amazing but like this is the end of our journey and we had ridden together for like a while you mm-hmm. know for several days and he was a really nice incredible person but i was like this is the end of our journey um you're gonna keep going and i'm gonna stay in this next little town and when i got to that little town um it was the most i guess I, the only way i could describe it is like spiritual experience of my entire life because I was in my bivy and it was 
so like this horrific storm rolled rolled in and the i was i was at this hot springs and the, i met the owner and the owner said it was cool if i camped you know for a couple of days in the grass or whatever for hmm. free or whatever so i'm like i'm just gonna stay here for a couple of days i'm gonna recoup like re like reset myself because i'm not in a good place and i want to be when i'm riding hmm. um and so i laid in my bivy during this storm and it was like it was so powerful and like um all of these things like just like it, it was just like it was magnificent and it was powerful and um and i cried a lot you know i spent a lot of time crying and like um the next day i came out of it and then the next the next segment of the adventure got extraordinary <laughs> <laughs> what but, yeah. what was spiritual about it i mean I, I didn't make that connection um it was the first so the chief, chief joseph pass was the first um real challenge of the the trip and so up until then it had been like fun right uh, and even okay. like even like the stuff that like wasn't as fun was still fun right yeah. it was like wow this is so fun right it's a fun um, challenge it's like oh that was hard but i did it that was cool yeah or like this this weird thing happened but that's totally fun it was like part of it but that that chief joseph pass was like where i was like i was like i actually felt kind of like miserable you know and so um once i got that that reality check kind of um all of a sudden it was like all of these things that i had been trying to run away from part of you know certain things that led me to even taking the the journey mm -hmm. um things i needed to grow from they all washed over me because up until then i was just ignoring them or mm. or i was just like building up like the enjoyment of the excuse me the the adventure but um that that day I just laid there and I had to process like this stuff. And, um, from it, you know, I'm hearing these storms. I'm underneath this tree. I'm underneath the weirdest tree I've ever seen. It had like two heads on the top of it. What? Like, yeah, it was like split at the top of it. And I just like, I just like felt like I felt the earth. Um, I felt the storm. I felt, I felt like, um, being in, I felt, I felt the power of what I was in. And, um, I felt the experience and I felt connected and, and that's why I said it was, it was spiritual. And there's, there's actually a lot more to the story. Um, but I can talk about it for just that one segment forever, but yeah. there was a, per, there was a person involved that like impacted me tremendously yeah. that, that showed up out of the woodworks kind of. Oh, wow. But, yeah. Yeah. Being, uh, yeah. Being in nature and being isolated and, and, uh, dramatic weather, uh, is a, is a pretty powerful thing um, to experience. And it's an interesting time because you can choose to kind of accept it or you can like try to fight it, but you're never gonna win. So you might as well just kind of accept it. And uh, and I try to enjoy it, you know, uh, mm -hmm. if shit gets bad, just try to find a way to make it interesting or entertaining or, or whatnot. I wanna talk about your tattoos. You got one yeah. or two. Yeah. If yeah, if you you probably need to head over to Rebecca's uh, Instagram if you already haven't. It's Rebecca underscore Vader uh, on Instagram, uh, but you've got full sleeves. Or what's next for? Uh, do you have some more planned? <laughs> I have I have a whole leg that like is basically just outlines right now. So I just, I um, when I was when I was making art and stuff like that, I, I was sold to a lot of tattoo artists. My ex-husband's a tattoo artist. Um, so I just have like a lot of tattoos. Oh, I like tattoos. It's just, I do too. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. My wife doesn't let me get them as often as I want to, <laughs> but <laughs> I should just go do it. According to Rebecca, it'll be fine. I'm going, I'm going to get, uh, the next one I'm going to get is, um, one of my relatives, uh, her name is Dottie Farnsworth. Have you ever heard of her? By chance, I don't know. She uh, she was famous or is famous for uh, being one of the first um, women endurance cyclists in America. So this oh, wow. was like in 1890s to the early 1900s when you know uh, it was really integral integral to the women's movement at the time because it was progressing the boundaries of you know what women are capable of and uh, what were they were allowed to wear. Um, it was, it was just a really interesting time. Like there's one example I really like in the book where, um, did I mention that there's a book? 
No. Okay. Well, there's a book written about her called Women on the Move. Um, I'm actually going to interview the author of that, and I'm really excited. But uh, they, you know, the Victorian society at the time was trying to shut down the women's cycling. And the argument that they used was that um, surely a woman's leg would be hard as a brick and unbecoming and muscular and all these things. And we can't have that in today's society. It's not becoming of a lady. It's something along those lines, right? So this was a real thing. So what they did is they had like five people in a room and it was like um, a couple news people. Uh, there was a doctor there. There was an illustrator to like draw the leg. Um, and this and this was like big, big deal. So um, okay. Tilly, Tilly Anderson, uh, she wore a robe and she like exposed one of her legs. And in the book, it said that like uh, this was probably the first time that any of these men had ever seen a female leg before, you know, um, and but they all described it. So there's like an article that you can read describing Tilly Anderson's leg and how proportionate and beautiful it was. And they even said you could, you could uh, squeeze it and pinch, you know, the skin and, uh, and stuff. But that's amazing. Anyway, yeah. It's a, it's a great, uh, it's so cool that I'm related to her, but I'm going to get uh, a picture. I'm going to get uh, a, a dotty tattoo. Um, I'm trying to find an artist right now, but I'm really excited to get one of her like racing her bike. That's, I feel like I need a dotty tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll send you a book if you ever have an address where I can send one to. <laughs> All right. It's a, it's a great story, man. I'm, I'm super excited. I've been like really, I, I found out about it not too long ago, but, um, we, as a, America doesn't realize how much of our, um, history, uh, and culture like was shaped as a result of, of bicycles and bicycle racing um in at 1900 uh, endurance cycling was the number one sport in america uh, they they wow. would draw crowds of 12 to 14,000 people to these races and this will blow your mind so check this out like they would do it would be a six-day race on a velodrome so like the loop track you know and mm -hmm. Uh, they would go for six days and it would be like all day. So you'd like go all day and then you'd sleep and then you come back the next day and you do it again. They would average like 21, 22 miles an hour average for the full six days. Wow. On heavy ass steel bikes, single speed, not wearing all the cool clothes or, you know, the nice tires and the track was made out of scrap wood and, you know, and it's like, God. It doesn't matter what you fucking ride. It doesn't matter what you wear. None of this shit matters. They've been doing it for a long fucking time. Women have been doing it for a long fucking time. So go ride your damn bike. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're not breaking new ground here. Sorry. You know, no. they... go ahead. Oh, that, like, that was like one of the funny things. Like, I was like, well, do I need tubeless tires? I did get tubeless tires and I'm glad I did. But I was like, do I need tubeless tires? And one of the people were like, They've been doing the Trans America route since the seventies. You think they had tubeless tires back then? Like people, <laughs> people have been riding their their mountain bikes on the Great Divide for a long. Like this is not a new concept. Yeah. And people have had way shittier stuff. Yeah. They've had full sleeping bags, giant tents, like loaded down bikes. You know, like. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they've been doing it for. It. They've been doing it for a long time. And the gear is nice. I get it. But it shouldn't be a, a limiting factor. It shouldn't be the thing that keeps you from going out. And it shouldn't be the thing that you're judged for. If someone's like, oh, man, you're not running tubeless. Oh, my gosh, you're a fucking idiot. Well, fuck you. I don't have to ride tubeless. I like changing flats. God damn it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so why do you share on Instagram? Um, because what I'm doing is incredible, you know. Um, it's, it's special. And, um, if I'm figuring out the things that I am figuring out, like this is definitely like the most incredible thing I've ever done in my entire life. Like it's very important to me. It's like this huge growth period and, um, I need to document it and, you know, I want to share it. I want other people to, to see it. And, um, a lot of the times like getting message, I got, I got a lot of messages from people all like from all over the world that were like, you're inspiring me. Like what you're yeah. doing is like, it means a lot. Like seeing you do this, like gives me, makes me feel good. It gives me confidence. And like, um, they're just like, they relate, you know? And so that definitely like that feeds me doing it. Um, 
I love sharing this stuff. I love, I love people looking at my life and like enjoying what they're seeing. Um, I'm doing stuff that's different. I'm trying to do stuff that's different or I'm not even trying. It's just who, the, who I am. And right. so it's like, yeah, like look, look at what I'm doing. Does it help you? Cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah, if it doesn't, it's fine with you too. But um, yeah, I was I was kind of curious because like to listen to you talk, you could be a, the type of person that says, you know, I don't, I'm good. I don't need y'all. Um, I don't, I don't need social media. I don't need to put it out there. I'm not doing it for that reason. And I'm guessing you're not. Um, but no. it's fun. You're, you, you it's enjoy. So it's just fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I have a theory with uh, social media because there's so much content right and there's so much noise and distractions my thing is like and i've thought about it because i'm on social media and i have a podcast and i'm creating content and it's like okay well if i have your attention i want to fill it with something good or fun or worthwhile or educational or something but you know if i have your attention i'm going to do something good with it i'm not going to just promulgate bullshit or, or whatever you know what i'm saying like no fake news Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> well, and that, that that basically sums it up why I do it is because I have an important message for you. Here it is. This is my important message. I don't know how to describe it's it. It's my life. To, yeah, like th- what I'm doing is extremely important. Why? There you go. Because it's my life. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. It's, it's, it's my life, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of, yeah, I figured that would be your answer, but uh it's an interesting way to to look at it yeah because you don't you don't strike me as the kind of person that like hinges on the amount of followers or the amount of likes or whatever you're getting um so i was curious why why put it out there at all i'm glad you did because uh well number one it let me find you and uh and we got a chance to talk but uh i legitimately enjoyed watching your instagram like it's it's fun and if i can't be on my bike I enjoy looking at what people are doing in a unique way. I mean, I'm, I'm much more interested in like following a person as they're going through something. I mean, you were going through something big, your first bike tour. I mean, you could watch you overcome obstacles literally and physically um, or mentally or whatever. I mean, you you put it all out there. And so, you know, it, it uh, it's good. I like that. I, I, I want there to be more of that, you know, and that's why. That's, I mean, another reason I want to talk to you is because you, I anticipated and you are the type of person that's going to tell you what it's really like to be out on the road for 55 days with not a lot of money or not really a plan or, you know, anything uh, that's, that's unique and having a real honest insight into what that's like, uh, you know, people can value from that. People can draw inspiration and uh, and hopefully they'll go and, and do more stuff and I can follow them on Instagram. Yeah. Definitely. So what, what is next for you? Um, right now, like I'm, I, I'm feeling really good. I haven't even, I've only been back in Boise for a couple of days. I haven't really even processed everything yet. Like just, just talking this much about it to someone. Um, I'm like, I'm remembering things and it's like, <laughs> we're just scraping the surface, you know? Right. But, oh, um, for sure. I would, I, I, first and foremost, like, I just want a little stability because I, I did have so many, um, so much contrast as far as like where I was sleeping and stuff like that. So, um, I, I want to get like a little bit of, um, stability in my life, like find a nice place to live and stay, uh, get a job that I can make money at that, I, that I enjoy enough for now. And, um, I want to start like sort of sifting through this experience and like documenting documenting it and um like sort of putting it out there in in ways that i think are going to benefit me and other people you know what i'm saying like i i need some time to like process yeah you're still process, figuring it out so. yeah and and like um there's a lot of information there, you know, like I did, I did a, a, a pack list. It took me two days to make this pack list. That's where I was going um, with this. Actually. I wanted to talk about that. Okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I mean, I'll just set it up real quick. Like, um, you, you come across a little bit like, um, unprepared maybe, and maybe you were probably going into it, but 
sitting here now, you have acquired a mass amount of information um, and really good information. I, I looked at uh, the, your pack list that you put together. You put together some videos of how your gear is stored and where it goes. And I mean, you, you got your shit together. It's not like you were just out there. I mean, maybe you won't winged in the beginning, but you, you figured the shit out and you got a really good system going on. So yeah. Why don't you talk about it a little bit? Um, yeah, I, I, that was one of the, the hardest things was when I decided to make this journey, I was like, okay, so I just want to like, I don't really want to bring a lot of stuff. And we have like a general idea of like, you know, what we're going to do. And, and we're like, well, we'll just pack for it. And when I say we, I'm talking about me, like, yeah. I, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just, I'll just pack for it and it'll be fine. But it's, it's like, it's extraordinarily complex because when you're getting rid of every single thing you own and you only have a limited amount of money, um, and like, you don't know what you're going into. I had no idea I was even going to use warm showers. I thought I was going to be fighting bears. Like I was like, I'm going to go just like ride into the mountains. I don't even know what it looks like. And there's just going to be like all this wildlife. I'm just going to be like a mountain person from now on. I have no idea. Right. <laughs> so I didn't know. I didn't know that what the trans America route was, you know, like I stumbled upon that. And so, yeah. um, there's lots of like resources out there and, um, but I just, I just um, networked and I asked my, my friends that have done similar things. And um, I, I made lists after lists after lists of what they suggested. And then I um, would like seriously think of like, okay, do I actually need this? Because I don't want to make this any harder on myself than I have to. Like my, my goal in this whole adventure was not to be like super, like, you know, strong and like, um, I like, I love endurance um, ath athletic stuff. Like I like long walks and stuff, but I wasn't, my goal wasn't to like power through this trip and like right. prove like that I'm a really good cyclist. My goal was to like ride my bike because I think it's fun mm -hmm. and go see the world. Yeah. And so I was like, how am I going to make this easy? And, um, so that I could do it for as long as possible. So I, I thought very seriously about every single item I brought. And I, um, I just basically like made a pile of the stuff and, um, would sift through it and, and look at it. And then, um, the pile would go into like two piles, like one of like, I don't really need this. And I do need this. I don't really need this. And I do th need this. And, um, it took, it probably took me two months of doing this before I got my, um, my core, like got what I took with me. And I still have to this day, wow. like I thoroughly thought of this. And then, um, once I moved out of the place I was in and I sold my car and I had no pets and I had no work, I was just a bike hobo in Boise practicing. Mm. And, um, so I had this stuff and I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go set this up in my parents' backyard and okay. see like if I can camp overnight or I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to see if I could survive with what I have. And so I did that. And, um, I did, I did, I did exceptionally well. Like I didn't, um, I didn't get rid of very much stuff. Um, I had a way, I had way less stuff than anyone else I met that was on tour. Wow. Uh, um, and I got to uh, say real yeah. quick, uh, about camping in your parents' backyard. That's something that I preach a lot uh, is just camp in your backyard. Like you don't have to make it super epic, but if you need to test out and figure out what your capabilities are and what they aren't set up your tent in your backyard, see if you can cook a meal, see if you can sleep on them you know, air mattress or, or whatever it is. Like it's a great way to get started. It's just set it up in your backyard. Yeah, totally. Set it up, do it several nights. Like, yeah. Yeah. You, you can go inside if you don't like it or yes. like, you know, you could adjust it. Um, and then my first, my first climb, I had a group of mechanics. There's like four of them. They're all like bike packers. So I was like, Oh, cool. These guys are going to like take me on my first climb. Um, they took me on this, um, hill or this mountain called the Aldape summit. I, I love it up there. I've been up there twice, but, um, they rode with me and it got dark and then they were like, okay, see ya. And they left me up there. So, um, I spent two nights up there cause I'd never done anything like this before. I'd never ba backpacked or anything. Um, and I set my stuff up and it was like a horrible hell storm. Like it was, sto it stormed the entire time I was up there. It wow. rained. It was just like this black, massive like amount of clouds and and i'm just on this little hill there's nothing to do around there and it's just like my bivy and my tarps and like i freaking walked around and i figured out how to make fires and i just like just did like 
nature stuff and i was yeah. like i'm just gonna fucking try it out you know right and it was fun it was awesome um were you in a I position a where you could call somebody or you could just like ride down the mountain if you know it didn't go well or whatnot yeah so the mountain goes it, it goes right into town basically okay yeah so it was like i knew no matter what happened like it Great. would be fine. That's but, that's the um, other yeah. That those are my steps to bike packing. Start in your bike hit backyard and then do your first trip somewhere close, somewhere where you got cell service or you could get back to town easily or whatever. But you know, you were in it, you were doing it, um, but you had resources I, if you needed them. On day two, I completely ran out of water, completely ran out of food, lost also like my cell phone died. So I ran out of resources by the end of the second day and I was like it's okay though because tomorrow morning I'm gonna pack up and I'm gonna ride down this hill because I'd never descended either before that was my first climb and my first time going downhill <laughs> so I was like I didn't know what to expect I was by myself and I was like okay like now I know what it's like to not have food or water and I don't like this and I need to figure <laughs> out how to not let that happen again yeah you know yeah and so yeah and it, it was huge well yeah it is huge. Uh, did you have any concerns about, uh, yeah, were you concerned about not having food and water or did you just put it in perspective and be like, okay, I'm going to be thirsty and I'm going to be hungry, but I'm not going to die. It's just going to suck and I'll be home tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, looking back on it, the way I felt about it, it was like, it was definitely like way bigger feeling because it was my first time experiencing it. Um, like now it could happen to me and I could give two shits less. I'm like, okay, I know like everything's going to be fine. But, um, back then I didn't know, you know, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, how long, how long can I, like, can I get down this mountain without water? Like what happens if I like, what do I do? You know? And I had no idea what to expect. So it's just like, I was cool with it, but I was also like, you know, I had, I had some weird concerns and there was like little critters crawling on my bivy and I wasn't, you know, that was just stuff you didn't expect. And it, it, it turned out to be little chipmunk, chipmunks and yeah. it was fine. But um, there was just a lot of things that I wouldn't have thought of. And so after doing it and going through it, I was like, oh, like everything worked out. And on my way down, there's people coming up. And it was like the greatest day of my life because I get to go downhill. And like I, <laughs> I find, found out that that's like the best feeling to me in the entire world is riding my bike downhill like that. Yeah, uh, it's pretty freeing. So let's uh, go back to your equipment because I know that you I, – well, I believe what you're doing is um, putting – some stuff on Patreon, Patreon for people to, I don't know, tell, what are you doing? So, um, I, I learned about Patreon a long time ago and, um, I think it's cool, you know, like definitely people want to support me and definitely people want to give me money and stuff like that. But I also want to like do something else. Like, I don't want to just like, like, sure, like give me money, but also like, I want to be able to like give something in return if possible. And especially when I'm like, when I was doing the tour, it's like, I, I barely knew where I was going to sleep half the time, let alone be able to like figure out a way to like get an income. Right. Um, but I came up with the idea. I was like, I can provide, I'm going to make a really detailed pack list and I'm going to explain like every single item that I took with me and how it benefited me. And, um, my, my, I guess my review of it or whatever after 55 days so that I could provide this for people because that, that is like the most valuable thing that I could offer, you know, and can offer at the very, like at this moment is like, this is some information that took a lot of, a lot of work. And then 55 days of testing in order to like, tell you like right. this, this actually worked for me. And I'm going to mm -hmm. honestly tell you that, you know what I mean? It, so is this, are you, are you hoping to uh, create a lifestyle that's uh, kind of centered around bike packing or bike touring, or is this just something that you're doing kind of for fun? I mean, do you have um, a, do, do you have a plan or is it, uh, I get the sense that maybe you just do things and if they work great and you roll with it and if not, then you roll with something else. Yeah. I, I do everything for as long as it's fun, as long as it's the funnest thing I can be doing and I, and I love it. Like I'm going to continue to do it. And, um, as far as a plan, like I said, like right now, I just, I just want a little bit of stability so that I can like sort and sift and process and like try to get the most from this experience. So, because what, what I'm offering right now is like just scratching the surface of like what I know, what, what has happened, like, um, 
I have so much valuable information. Like I just went to fucking life school, <laughs> like <laughs> straight up. Like there's, I can't, I, I, I was in, um, the mountains in like a crazy artist retreat with like famous people or like people bringing in, um, artwork from New York city, you know, like this crazy like place. And then I was sleeping under a bush. Like I've seen the full spectrum <laughs> of four States, you know? Yeah. And, and so I have all of this information. I don't know like where I can apply it. And, um, that's going to be the, the next fun part is right. just like taking some time to like, to like, um, kind of lay it out and then see where I want to go from there. See, see how, how it's going to make my, um, this chapter of my life better and see like, you know, what sort of avenues it opens up for me. Right. So if people want to support you right now, um, is Patreon the best way to, to do that? Yeah, definitely. So what, what is that, uh, domain? Like the, the, the website, what's the website? It, it's, www.patreon.com forward slash Rebecca Vader. Is that the underscore or no? No underscore, just Rebecca Vader, one word. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm a support. I'm a patron. I'm a proud patron of Rebecca Vader. You're the only person I Patreon. Aww. <laughs> I, it, feel, it, it feels good, though, because I have a, a, a really nice uh, group of patrons that uh, support the show very grateful to them shout out to all my patrons um but it it feels good because i i really did get a lot of value and i enjoy watching your stories and they're entertaining and i'm like rooting for you know like i find myself being like yeah you get that bike over that uh that fence i mean that was a great video that was so much fun it's like is she gonna make it is the bike gonna break is she gonna break what's gonna happen (laughs) I should send you the full version where like you can hear me like if you vo- turn the volume up I'm like motherfucker like I'm just like I'm like c- cursing yeah but I'm also like stoked it was like yeah 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 I want the full version I want the unedited Rebecca Vader throwing her bike over a fence that'd All be right. awesome <laughs> well is there anything else that I mean the truth is is that you know we talked for almost two hours and it you only scratch the surface i could i could talk to people all day but is there anything that you wanted to talk about or wanted to say that we didn't get an opportunity to to get around to yet um no but i think uh just really quick on the the patron thing yeah. um i think what what's probably going to happen is like the the stuff that i come up with that is of value and stuff like that i'm going to put it on there so like my instagram is just like basically my daily life and like little tiny snippets of what what i'm doing and just like keeping people you know informed on what's going on but um as far as like when i put out real content and stuff like that when i start sifting this information it's going to go on there so right. um, and i'll make I'll make posts on my Instagram about it so people can go like know when it's coming out and go check it out. But, um, um, I mean, there's, there's, there's a million stories I could tell you. Like I sprayed myself in the face with fucking bear spray. Um, (laughs) like I got bit by a poisonous spider. I, I did. uh, Oh, I forgot about the leg. Yeah. Yeah. What I, I never got the full conclusion of that, but you posted a picture on the internet and said, Hey guys, got bit. Don't know. What do you think I should do? And I think the general consensus was get yourself to a ER or a hospital in fairly yeah. short order. Was that right? Well, people people were getting really upset, and I was like seeing like there's people kind of like starting to like bicker with each other, and I and so I took the post off. And oh, I you was did? Like, yeah, I was like, I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna keep this up here because I don't want people to. Uh, be freaked out or think that this is what the experience is like it was just it was a minor thing where i was just like okay i have this bite and like i have like i don't know anything about this kind of stuff but um yeah i, I got i got i went backcountry camping in yellowstone and i got bit by a spider of some sort um and then it it progressively like you know did what a poisonous spider bite does and i i had it checked out by the um the rangers um the ranger emts and they were just like you know keep an eye on it and uh, they weren't really sure what kind of spider it was but um it it, for like seven days it wasn't really it wasn't really getting worse but it wasn't like healing and then one day there was like a red line coming from it and i was like oh shit like i might actually have to go to the hospital yeah (laughs) um but it just 
I just kept taking care of it. And I, I just like tried not to think about it, try not to worry about it. And it was like, you know, if I need to go, I need to go. But, um, it like after that day, after the day I posted, it was like, it started to heal. I don't know if like people were putting out positive vibes <laughs> or what, but like it started to heal like pretty quickly. And, um, I just have a little bit of a, like a flesh, you know, a little mark on my leg and all as well. Nice. Yeah. I was, uh, I mean, I wasn't like scared, but I, I've, you never know what's get, what bit you and you're like, all right, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You got to be a little bit more aware of things like that because they can, they can go bad. So you need to keep an eye on it. What else? What other crazy shit happened? When I was leaving Spanish Fork, I, I have never been bitten so many times by mosquitoes. My, like I'm still like covered in mosquito bites. Like they're just like rock hard little That's like, the one you nuggets. That's posted like, the picture of your neck. Yeah, because yeah. I was I was in the bathroom and I was like, holy shit! And then I was I was like, look, I was like, you know, because you spend days without seeing what you look like, <laughs> like you know. So yeah. so all of a sudden I was like, oh my god! Like and then I was like, I'm covered in mosquito bites. That's always yeah. fun when you're like, oh, this is what everybody's seeing when they look at me. You know, you don't really oh, yeah. realize. I mean, at least you always look good. Um, I I I get looking pretty rough, and I'm like, oh man, I'm sure I'm a sight to see. They probably think I'm a homeless guy coming in here smelling all bad and trying to eat some food. Oh yeah, like the bear the bear spray day was the craziest one, but um I ended up I ended up going going from getting bear sprayed um looking like a crazy wild person cuz I had nothing else to wear and my hair's crazy. I can't wear my helmet, like everything's got bear spray on it. I get into um chico hot springs and i end up going to a fucking play in the park wearing that red dress because that was like the only thing in there was in a separate bag put this red dress on and start drinking ipas <laughs> with fucking bear spray in my hair still <laughs> with this with this group of people i just met that were like we want to house you like come stay with us wow like, okay. yeah man our synergy is good right now i was just about to ask you about the red dress uh yeah so you pack that red dress so the, the red dress was so special. I was, this was when I was in both, um, there's a, a place I went to like 30 miles outside of Bozeman. And this was one of the most magical places I, I got to experience. Um, a friend of mine, I, I, I randomly messaged him and I was like, I'm in Bozeman. I don't know anybody here. Um, do you by chance know anybody here? Cause you snowboard. And this, th this guy, this friend of mine is like a mate. He's an amazing human being, right? He's on the level. He, he's like, yeah, let me, let me make a phone call. And so this guy comes and picks me up. And by this point I'm sitting at this microbrewery and I'm just like tying one off. Right. Cause I don't know what I'm going to be doing. And, um, I just rode and long rides. I like to drink sometimes and I like to drink anyways, but, um, <laughs> so, so this guy picks me up and I'm just like being like kind of an asshole and like, Hey, what's up? Like whatever. Um, he takes me to his house and he's just got this like fucking like, artist retreat like in in the mountains it's like the most it's the most incredible place i've ever been like wow. and he's he's like this he's like this um well-known artist and he throws these like crazy like um art he has this like garage that he's converted into like this beautiful art gallery and he throws these like art things um these art shows and um so people are coming in from New York to put their art in there and leaving. And it was like, it was crazy, but I was like, okay, I feel kind of bad because you have all of these people coming and going and you just took me like as like this straggler. So I, I moved up to the street to his neighbor and his neighbor like loved me. And he took me, he's like, he's like, I'm going to take you to this grateful dead cover show. But I only had my, like this stuff. I still have like my bike here. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to buy you a dress. And so like, we had a joke. He was my sugarless daddy. Like he, he was doing really nice things for me. And, um, I was his company for a few days and it, so was, it was amazing. Yeah. Did he give you the dress or did you bring the dress? Where did the dress come no, from? He, the dress came from Bozeman. He bought me the dress Oh. to take me out to this concert. Okay. But, and it was like, it was like an extraordinarily magical experience. Like I felt beautiful for the first time in a month, you know, yeah. like I had, I, I'm just like this gnarly, like endurance athlete, whatever I am at this point, but <laughs> being Dirt able bag to bike wear, tour. Yes. There you go. What being able to wear a dress and like, um, you know, try to like get feminine and stuff was like, it was so extraordinarily special. And like, yeah. 
I am so great, grateful and appreciative that he, um, he did all of that for me. And he, um, he took me to this concert and he, he treated me like a princess. And that was like, I really needed it. And he wasn't like creepy or he wasn't being, you know, he wasn't being weird or anything. He was just like, he was just being a nice person to me. And I, it was, it was really nice. Well, you did look beautiful. It was a, yeah, it was a really stark contrast to everything else. It's like your page, you're going along the dirt bag bike tour. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, okay, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it, it was, it was interesting. It, 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 it was something I definitely wanted to talk to you about. Cause I was curious. I'm like, all right, did she like bring this dress? Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, like, where do you, and why would you pack a dress like that? And I was just curious where that came from. It, it was definitely like, um, it was like comfort food, you know, care, like even having the dress with me, even though I wore it to that, that play. Um, but I think that was the only other time I wore it was those two times. And, um, but just having it was just like a reminder that like underneath all of this, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still feminine. I'm still a woman. Yeah. And like, um, it was, it was nice. I liked it. Yeah. Do you have the dress still? I do. So you kept it, you, uh, pe- packed it with you. Um, I had a friend visit me and I gave it to my friend to bring to Boise with him. So Uh, my friend has, my friend has the dress. um, Good. Now I, that I can sleep tonight knowing that the dress is in good hands. It lives. (laughs) The dress lives. Good. Maybe. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe you'll do a bike tour in the dress one day. That'd be nice. Yeah. Maybe I'll do a photo shoot in the dress. I don't know. Maybe I'll sell the dress on Patreon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Photo shoot. Do you do modeling? Um, no, Cause not there's some really pictures like... on your Instagram. I'm like, these are kind of like modelish. Um, so I, people sometimes like ask, you know, ask if they can take photographs. I'm not, I, I'm not really like one of those people that's like, Oh, I want to do some like modeling or yeah. I, I actually feel like I feel like extraordinarily awkward when I do modeling, but, um, yeah. or like do that kind of stuff. But if someone asks me to do it, then yeah, I'll do it. You know, if I don't have anything yeah. going on, but, um, well, you have a, you have a, a powerful look. I mean, with all the tattoos and everything, I mean, you, you, yeah, you, you'd make a good model. Thank you. <laughs> you do make a great model. I mean, just looking at Instagram, I was like, yeah, I'd buy that shirt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right what else all right let me see oh you're uh do you have to go no this i'm cool cool uh you wore arm sleeves i actually had on here modeling i was gonna ask you about that uh aren't you wear like white arm sleeves are those just to cover your tattoos yeah and that's so funny um this is kind of like a full circle of some earlier stuff we talked about but like um like about, you know, being a specific, looking a specific way or just doing whatever the fuck you want. So I, I strategically chose what I wear, right? Like my tri suits, like I'm actually wearing my tri, I told you I, I'm wearing yeah. my tri suits because I was doing laundry. <laughs> um, this is the only thing that's clean. Yeah. But, before um, we started recording, it was so funny because all I've seen her in is a, the black tri suit and the red dress. And then she walks, uh, we're, we're doing a video and she's wearing her black tri suit. I'm like, wait, do you not have any clothes? You could, you should have put on the red dress for me, but Hey, next time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, I had the tri suit and then I had like, um, I got the, the arm warmers to cover my tattoos because I, you know, want to protect them or whatever. And having black tattoos, it gets hotter. Like your skin gets really? hotter. Yeah. I didn't know that. Like, yeah. People don't know that, but yeah, all I have is black tattoos. Yeah. My arms get like super hot. Um, oh, okay. So I wear the, the arm sleeves, but it actually like, it kind of like turned into a thing where people were like, um, always like always asking me about them. And then I started like people I rode with and like, I started seeing people wearing them. Like they started going out and buying them and wearing them. I was like, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> like I kind of started like, I mean like people have been wearing those things forever, but, yeah. um, well that's yeah, your first like, product right there. The Rebecca Vader tattoo arm sleeve thing. <laughs> my, my arm warmer. My, yeah. Maybe you can make some arm warmers or arm sleeves that like have your tattoos on them. You know, it's like the print of your tattoo and you could sell those. And so people could like rock the Rebecca tattoos while they're on the rides. Yeah. Maybe. Why not? You're like, yeah, sure. Someone make that for me and I'll do it. 
<laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. Well, I do have to go, but I'm going to ask you a good one before a tough one. Maybe not a tough one, a fun one before we get off to get off. Um, so what are the pros and cons of being a woman on a bike tour? Um, the pros are like, you're just like the most incredible thing that ever existed. You're fucking a woman, like being a woman and taking life by the balls and having fun and, um, really seeing what you're made out of. And that's not just women. That's everybody. If you go on bike tour, you're a badass. Period. Yeah. Period. Doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. I believe that. Um, yeah. So that's the pros. Um, the cons is um, there. It I can't really say anything like specifically for a woman because it, everybody's experience is going to be different, you know. And like just because I might have had a couple instances that made me uncomfortable or whatever, um, that doesn't mean everyone's going to have that experience. And um, I did have. I did have like one dude totally be a creeper and I had to call the cops on him. But, mm. um, it was like, for the most part, like, I don't know. I just think it's kind of like amazing being a woman on a bike tour. Like nothing is bad enough to make you not do it for sure. Yeah, for sure. How did you handle the situation with a creeper? I don't need to know all the details, but in terms of just educating other women or people that might find themselves in a not good scenario, I mean, you just picked up the phone and called. I mean, um, well, I was I was on the road when and he was like pulling me over on the side of the road and stuff. It's just don't fucking talk to people if you don't want to. You have no obligation to be polite and no obligation to give anybody any sort of information you don't want to. Yeah. Um, and that's just in life in general, male, female, anybody. Like if someone's not making you feel excited to talk to them, like don't talk to them. Um, and if someone makes you uncomfortable, no matter what, if someone makes you uncomfortable, talk to someone that makes you comfortable and uh, like let inform other people that there's someone making you uncomfortable. Hmm. And, um, and if, if you aren't sure what to do, like allow other people to kind of handle the situation and, um, that was sort of what happened with me. Like the general consensus was like, you need to call the cops. And I was like, okay, call the cops in and just yeah. let, let it be known. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good, good idea. Uh, Hal Russell, when I interviewed him, he, uh, takes pictures with people, um, and, uh, or just of them. Um, if, cause he, he's an older gentleman, he's 73. Do you know how 70? Yeah. He said, no, he's 70. He just did a tour divide for the sixth time and he didn't even wow. start, he didn't even start cycling until he was 57. So he's another That's great something. example of like, you can do it. Like, it, you know, the, these ideas that we have in our minds of, you know, you can't be 70 and go do 2,700 miles on a tour divide self-supported. No, you can. I promise you, because Hal does it, you know, but that's oh, yeah. what he does is he he takes a picture. And then if he if someone like starts being weird, he'd be like, hey, I just want you to know that picture. It's in my cloud. All my family and friends have access to it. If anything happens to me, it's there. It's your picture they're going to see. And he's just like straight up tells them like that. I was like, that's a that's a good idea, too. Well, and that you know, and that just goes back to just like the way the way you are thinking and um, even for me, like I try, not, I try to not even get to that level where I feel like I have to like constantly be looking over my shoulder because I'm here for this experience, you know? And so I don't even like, I don't think about stuff like that. And I just trust, um, not saying that what he did isn't a great idea because, right. um, do anything that you have to, that's going to give you peace of mind, but also like, don't overdo it and don't get yourself into this mindset where you're just a victim, you know? And, um, it's that, it's that fear-based mentality that, um, ruins the experience, right? Like I, I met a lot of people who, like I met one guy, he was amazing. He's 20 years old. He's from Canada. He just graduated. Um, and he was like, I'm going to go find out what, what I made him. So I'm going to go do the, the great divide. Cause I saw this woman on Instagram, not me, but another woman like on Instagram who just did it. Mm. And so if she could do it, I believe in myself, but he was absolutely terrified of bears <laughs> like and, and we're camping in campgrounds where there's bears walking through the campground oh like, my they're gosh at, they're everywhere right yeah. but he's he's like terrified of them and i'm like dude and he and he watched all of these bear videos so like he just spent so much time like like freaked out and like worried about these bears and it's like dude if a bear's gonna eat you like you're gonna get eaten by a bear <laughs> but like until until that is in your experience like you don't need to like have your have your bear spray if you need it or if you want it, but like you don't need to um, spend.
spend your entire trip dwelling Worrying on the fact that there's bears. Yeah, you should educate yourselves about bears' behaviors, what you should and shouldn't do, um, what you should do with your food, how to, I mean, just basic, uh, don't be a dumbass whenever you go in the woods, you know, like figure right. out the basics. Oh. And, and then, yeah, that's it. And then if a bear is going to eat you, I mean, that is actually a pretty neat way to die. I mean, that's what I said. I was like, what a better way to go out than on tour getting eaten by a bear. Right? Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you're a legend. <laughs> They're going to write songs about you. I mean, it, it doesn't yeah. get any better than that. <laughs> All right. Very good, Rebecca. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy um, your fresh perspective on life, um, on riding bikes, doing it your way. Um, it's it, it really is inspirational and it's it's entertaining. Uh, you, you're, you're a very entertaining person. So, uh yeah, if anybody's interested, head over to Patreon, check her out. Uh, if you like what she's doing, throw a couple bucks her way, uh, get her back on the road so she can keep providing some entertainment for all of us out there that are stuck at home and not able to ride our bikes, or we are living in our fears and we haven't let ourselves go and we are living in a house and we're not on bike tour like Rebecca is or will be soon. Thank you. That was amazing. All right. You made it all the way to the end. Thank you for sticking around. Um, what can I say about Rebecca Vader? You know, she, for her, she has life figured out. And I don't know if that life works for everybody, um, but it seems to be really working for her. You know, she has, she has some really uh, great perspectives on life. Um, from, you know, the way she frames fear and frames her experience um, to, you know, not having bad days and only having days of contrast and days where you grow. Um, yeah, really, really insightful stuff. Uh, and on top of that, she is uh, really entertaining. I think mostly she's entertaining because she's so enthusiastic about life. You know, she's she's all in every single day. It, you know, it's we wait, what do I want to do today? All right, I want to ride my bike. I think I'm going to ride through four states. I might not come back for a while. Oh, that sounds good. Okay, I'll do that. Sounds pretty cool. As always, I enjoyed that conversation. It was no exception. Um, I, I am so lucky that I get to talk to all these people, and I'm so uh, thankful that I get to be in a position to bring you these amazing stories from amazing people that are out there doing amazing things. And I am not going to say amazing anymore for the rest of the podcast because I just hit my quota. So moving on. All right. Some bikes or death business notes t-shirts have been ordered people it is happening and they are fucking awesome t-shirts they are made in usa hemp uh it's like a hemp cotton blend uh they're organic and environmentally friendly like these are legit shirts i didn't want to go cheap you know this is our first run um of bikes or death apparel and i wanted them to be nice so uh yeah i'm really excited i want one like now so uh as soon as we get them i'm gonna post it up on the website that's bikesordeath.com forward slash store and uh yeah put it on put a notification on instagram and the facebook and let you guys know so y'all can hurry up and, and get those. We have 50. This is our first run. There's definitely going to be more. But I basically just took all the money that I had uh, saved up from Patreon and Amazon affiliates and everything like that. And I invested that into some uh, some shirts. So, yeah, stay tuned. Those are going to be hitting the website. Hopefully, I think they said it's going to be like two weeks. So, um, yeah, it should be about two weeks from now. All right, also, I am going to be at the Bikepacking Summit this year. That is October 4th through 6th, and it's going to be at Mulberry Gap Mountain Bike Getaway, and that's in Elijah, Georgia. Um, so head over to bikepackingsummit.com, get yourself registered, and get yourself ready to meet me and hang out with me and ride bikes with me, and, and we'll cuddle and tell each other that we love each other. You know what? That's a little too much. How about we just ride bikes and drink beer? Right? Is that cool? All right. 
Uh, but anyway, if you're if if you do want to uh, if you want to meet me for whatever reason, you want to ride bikes, hang out. Um, I'm gonna be there, and I think it'd be really neat to meet a lot of y'all. So uh, yeah, I hope y'all take the opportunity to um, to register and and uh, go up there and say hi. I think it's gonna be a good time. They got a whole host of awesome presenters this year, and the Mulberry Gap. Uh, mountain bike getaway looks super legit. I'm really excited to check that out. So, um, all right. Well, listen, this is the time of the show where I like to, uh, pitch you on ways that you can support the show and what we're doing here. The easiest way is to just head over to bikesordeath.com because from there you're going to be able to find, uh, the Amazon affiliate link. Um, that is a great way to support the show because it doesn't cost you anything. You just go to bikesordeath.com, you click on that link and, uh, and just bookmark it. So every time you go shopping on Amazon, um, we'll get a little bit of money. So, uh, just as an update so far, there's been, uh, 57 ordered items on Amazon through that affiliate link and I've made $84.50. So keep it up people. That is like the easiest way to support the show. I think pretty much everyone on planet earth uh, is using Amazon at this point, right? So, um, and I actually added a new one. I, it occurred to me that maybe you don't wanna be on Patreon. Maybe committing to a dollar or a couple dollars every month is scary, but maybe you listen to a, a podcast Maybe it's this podcast. You're like, damn, that was a really good podcast. I'm going to give them a tip. I'm going to give them like however much you want. Um, but yeah, maybe you want to just throw throw a tip my way or a little bit of money and uh, maybe a note it says, hey, that was a really good podcast. Here's a couple bucks. I appreciate it. Um, so you can also find that link on the website in addition to the Patreon link. So Patreon, if you're not familiar, uh, you sign up monthly it can be a dollar all the way up to however many dollars um you have it depends on how rich you are <laughs> and or how much you like the show but uh but yeah you're just committing to uh support the show on a monthly basis uh i'm up to 93 patrons which is amazing i don't think i thank them enough um it's very humbling and uh and overwhelming that you guys are like so supportive of the show um and I try to do good with that money. You know, I'm definitely putting it back into the show and trying to grow it and make it better and get some cool merchandise for y'all um, and all that rad jazz. So, um, and then the last way that you can support the show is just through merchandise, stickers, patches, and t-shirts coming to you soon. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, you can find all that, like I said, on the website. So head over there, check it out. It's your one-stop hub for supporting the show. All right, friends, I don't care how, I don't care where, and I don't care when. All I care about is that you ride your damn bike. Hey!